It was a type of breeze that gave me chills down my spine, but after, I felt warm. The sunny day seemed to only get hotter, but the breeze helped with that. It kept me chill every time I was getting too hot. I decided, because of this nice breeze and sunny day, that I would go outside. I walked outside and the first thing that caught my eye was the half-shredded target laying up against the treehouse. I looked at it and then bolted inside and grabbed my throwing knives from my room. I had just gotten them at the Alaska State Fair and had been dying to try them out. They were very sharp to a ten-year-old boy, but I was too excited to care. When I held them in my hand, I could feel the cold, metallic chill run up my fingers from the blade. The feeling of letting the knife slip through my fingers and hearing the thunk sound when the knife sank its blade into the target was the best feeling. That day, I was outside and I was throwing knife after knife and not missing a single shot. So, being the kid that I was, I thought it would be cooler to be farther away and hit the target and maybe make the knife go deeper into the wood. I backed up, took a deep breath. I heard the birds chirping and smelled the fresh-cut grass coming from the grass pile by the fence. I could hear the bees buzzing behind me around the flowers my mom had just planted into the ground. I opened my eyes and picked up the knife and threw my arm up, then down again, and watched the knife soar through the air like an Alaskan bald eagle diving for its prey. I went from an anxious little boy with a happy smile to a terrified look of horror. I watched the knife fly farther and farther until it eventually flew over the fence. A second later, I heard a sound. At that time, it was the loudest sound I'd ever heard. It was it was like all the other sounds around me were mute, and that sound was turned up super loud on a stereo that was right next to my ear. The sound of that window breaking was a trigger for my emotions to go completely out of whack. I couldn't stop thinking about what would happen to me. All the thoughts of, You are grounded for life, young man, or My son wouldn't have done something like so stupid. Or even thoughts like, You're not my son kept running through my head. I couldn't stop thinking about them, and with time, they only got worse. I ran as fast as I could over to where the sound came from. My feet were stamping on the ground like a fat kid on a trampoline. I turned to the fence corner and was horrified to see my knife inside the pane of the broken window. I acted fast, not even thinking about the consequences of grabbing the knife because I didn't care. The only thing I cared about at that moment was to not get caught. After I grabbed the knife, I sprinted into my room and put the knife deep in my closet, which I called the black hole, and then sat on my bed. It wasn't till shortly after that I noticed the sharp pain in my hand. I looked down and saw a giant cut on my hand, at least three inches long. I felt the most fear I'd ever felt and the most pain in my hand that I had ever felt before. I couldn't tell my parents, because if I did, then I would get into trouble. So I decided to patch up my hand without telling anyone. I used gauze and super glue to stick the cut back together. Since it was cut by glass, there was no tearing, which made it a relatively easy fix. I used many tissues to get a grip on the bloody hand and squeezed it together. I then put super glue along the outside of the cut. I sat there for at least 30 minutes holding that there. After I had fixed up my hand with gauze and glue, I sat in my room waiting. I was teary-eyed, and I had I had to spend the rest of the day hoping no one would blame me for that broken window. The whole day my hand was throbbing, and every time it throbbed, it felt like something was squeezing my swollen palm. I had to hide it from everyone, otherwise I could get caught, so I came up with a brilliant plan. My older brother loved to wear sweatshirts. He had so many, and when he grew out of them... He would give them to me. I was three years younger than him, so the sweatshirts were way too big for me, which was perfect. The sleeves were just the right length to hide both my hands. Many people questioned why I wore my brother's big sweatshirts instead of my coat, and I would always tell them that I was extra cold and my coat wouldn't work like this sweatshirt does. Eventually, I wore them for so long that people just got used to me wearing them, and no one ever asked me about them after that. I wore those shirts for a very long time, until my hand was healed and the cut was completely gone. It took a couple of months for that cut to go completely away. But that was the day that I told myself, don't throw any more of your knives toward that fence ever again. And I didn't.